It was like, oh my god, this Thais guy is just insane with his Druid plays. Because it was, it was like last year was standing, so he could just free everybody or two everybody with Druid. It was really insane. Yeah, that was happening. And uh, uh, today we'll have different format. We were talking about the last hero standing, but today we'll be playing in a Conquest format, but it will be best of three. So it's kind of different from the usual Conquest of a best of five. It's still good. Uh, the last, the usual tournaments that I still play in, the, I play some Open Cups, and uh, yeah. they are also best of three. Because... Best of three is more time efficient, and the better player will usually prove himself even in a best of three. Best of five is better for like uh, when two pro players play against each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I really like best of three too. I think it's like perfectly fine because in conquest, many many times when I have a free deck lineup, I'm like, okay, these two decks are really solid, but the third one is like eh, not that great. <laughs> so yeah, I wish I could true. play best of three more actually. In in best of three format, you will show your like your best skill, the two best decks you can play. So we will see some insane games today. True, that's a, that's a really interesting approach uh, when it comes to conquest. Because actually, I found myself uh, in this position also when I was thinking about free decks. The first two are always easy to pick. Like you have some favorites, right? And yeah, then yeah. the third one is like, ah, uh, what to do? What to do? Should I play aggro in this pick? <laughs> but then it's kind of weak to like. A certain uh, choice of decks which can abuse the one deck that you picked as the third one, and that can cause you uh, that can cost you the whole game. So it's it's really different. Usually, your decks have to have like a pattern. You either pick like the best decks in the meta and you just yolo it, or you pick yeah. like uh, decks to counter that, 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 and all your free decks to counter some specific meta part is not that easy. True, true, exactly. So. Well, I'm I'm really really curious how will be uh, how will be how will this game and tournament look at all, and we'll be jumping into the game soon. Oh, already win the gameplay. So okay, two so drama players. Play Hunter. Yeah, and we have two drama players. So between uh, Gara and Aaron, we have a brotherly fight. We can say. <laughs> uh, we see Aaron keeping the sludge belcher, which is not something that you usually see without having the coin. That's really interesting. Um, Gara is keeping a, a really aggressive start. He wants to go turn one web spinner, turn two haunted peeper, and then coin out the four drop. He wants to be the aggressor in this matchup, and I really so, like the way he wants to approach it. Oh, he's playing a piece of surgeon in a mid range. Or maybe it's not mid range. Maybe it's just a face hunter with additional pile to shutter. Uh, no, it's like uh, it's called face range, and it gained popularity in the last week because some NA players uh, did really well with it. It's mm -hmm. like a face hunter that has shredders and savanna high mains. <laughs> it's okay. really interesting deck. It can go either perfectly, like drawing your good start, and then Savannah, and then Chargers, or it can yeah. go super terrible, like drawing Savannah starting hand, and then yeah, you're and you screwed. can't do anything in that situation when you can can play your minions first when you actually go for the damage range, right? So. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely favored against Handlock. Like, I think any type of Hunter is favored against Handlock because Handlock is a really slow deck that has to tap most of the time between uh, before turn 4 or else they cannot play like their big threats. Yeah, but so... this, when we look at this um, situation here, there's a Zombie Chow which poses a big threat and, and causes Gaara to play the Abusive Surgeon and trade for the Zombie Chow right now. Uh, I think that if the Knife would hit the Zombie Chow, Gaara would just ignore it. You think so? Yeah, I, I would personally ignore it. It's for damage, and then you miss one more because you hit. But because you hit face, you can afford to trade for damage. You don't miss that much. Uh, now we see the handlock player Elrond in a really bad spot. Yeah, that's an awkward turn. You have to tap and play the Sun Fury most likely, because th there's a freezing trap, maybe, or an explosive trap. He can't really know. Like, if. There's no possibility that um, he's sure what type of traps those are, unless you're playing against a face hunter. Like most play, uh, face hunters players uh, are playing on the explosive trap, but when it comes to mid range or some hybrids, then you're not sure what's happening. Oh, okay, wow. got a hit. That was really nice for yeah, him. Yeah, that was a really crucial hit with the knife. It was not that crucial. It was the difference between having or not having an abusive surgeon. Yeah, so it's and like one card. The thing is that if you lose the abusive, you gain one damage to the face, so you gain half of the abusive. It, it 
it is a difference, but it's not like game changing difference. It's not like the biggest RNG ever. Now I I think that is a slight misplay. His teammate hyped said many times that it's a misplay to not play the shredder in the middle because you can get flame tongue. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I wish he gets flame tongue. <laughs> so the juggles from the knife juggler would have hit face for one hundred percent because the hundred creeper was played before the sludge belcher. Uh yes. So and it will uh, spawn first. He's really afraid because he's playing into Hellfire. So he needs to find a way that if his opponent decides to play Hellfire, he can just punish him by winning a game. Oh, he decides to not attack at all. So he's bluffing with uh, with Freezing Trap, right? But is it Freezing Trap? I mm. didn't see if he play, if he can play the Explosive Trap. I don't see either. But is that a bluff? Like he attacked with the abusive, right? Huh. And with the weapon. So it's really. And weird. with the weapon. But it has to be. Maybe. Oh, I think he baits the snake trap or the explosive. He wants to put his opponent in a spot where, like, he cannot attack into the juggler because he will be afraid of snake trap that will kill yeah, the yeah. belcher most likely. And mm -hmm. then he cannot go for a face because he can be explosive. So that's yeah. a really cool play from Gara. I don't yeah, think he was baiting the, the freezing. He was baiting the other two. Yep, yeah, that's true. My for and, I, and he actually has snake trap. We got word from the production. Um, so in this situation, Gara can spawn three jugglers. I mean, three juggles from the knife juggler. Because you have two spawns from the hunted creeper, one spawn from the party shredder. But the question is, what does he want to do it? Yeah, yeah you, you, you probably want to do it. I think you attack the shredder first into the watcher. Again, you might get flame tongue. He decides to not do that. And now let's see how he hits. Oh, that's awful. He's not that awful if you think about it. Like now he can attack the Watcher. He has like a 75% chance that he kills something from the board. Look at that, 100 Creeper. Yeah. And now he attacks into the 1-2 with the Knife Juggler. He has the Snake Trap. He will get uh, two snakes. And that two snakes have like a really high percentage of uh, clearing clearing you the board. Attack, because if you attack into it, then your Knife Juggler is um, is um can be killed by Mortal Coil. Doesn't matter, you're not afraid of that. Wow, the, the, that hit perfectly, but now um, he gives opportunity to Elrond to just uh, Shadow Flame the board. Yeah. You have to Shadow Flame this, there's no way you don't Shadow Flame. True. But do you tap before? I think you might want to tap before. Ah, no, no, you want to more as well. I think you still f see first what's going on from the Pilot Shredder. Like, it, it couldn't be one night cheat, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you tap here. Uh, Life coach learned me that you have to be really aggressive with the taps and not be afraid of tapping. Gara went in without even thinking of the. Yeah, I think hand. in this situation you have to go in. But the problem is, the core hound takes all of his mana. So I was yeah I was thinking about just playing Lepernom and hero uh, hero power. To play the explosive trap because I'm sure that he plays quick shots too, right? So he wants to empty the hand as soon as possible. Well, if you want to empty the hand, core hand was the way to do it. It's way mana, is way more mana efficient. So yeah, I, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. I don't really like that play. Now he plays into so many things, and uh, I, I don't like the Belcher play either because the anti kill bot saves you for more usually than the Belcher. Bel Belcher dies really easily to an owl. Dies, whatever. He gets destroyed by an owl. And now mm -hmm. Gara will probably yeah. just. I I'm not sure if Gara will do anything at all. He might just pass the turn here. It's perfectly fine to just pass. What about killing the Lepronome? Because if it gets silenced, then you deny yourself two points of damage. That's the only thing he should think about. If he wants to kill the Lepronome or not. He decides to kill both into that. It's again really interesting. Uh, yeah, killing the Lepronome is definitely the play. And your opponent can cannot attack. He's blocked. Yeah. Of course. So he has he has to use the anti kill bot this turn. Yeah, but do you attack face first to proc the secret? Probably yes. Uh, you should probably calculate how much damage your opponent can have and how much damage you can have. Mountain giant to strike face <laughs> for two times. That's sixteen. The anti kill bot strikes for once. That's three. And then he needs six more damage. He only has three in the hand. He doesn't have enough to kill Gara in the next two turns. He attacked into the snake trap, which is really weird. Yes. Like he was still thinking about uh, about freezing trap. 
Uh, okay, because Gero play played the second trap, right? So he didn't know what kind of trap it is, so he was bluffed into the freezing trap with that. But it's weird that he did, just didn't go face with it. Well, the, the play here was like after the attack into the snake trap, he probably just had to hit the face and then uh, Hellfire play the Healbot afterwards and next turn Siphon Soul and try to not die. But now he gives Gara an option to win the game. Really? Oh, Gara misses on the companion. <laughs> yeah, no hover. He can still win, I guess. Well, uh, he will get free life from the Siphon Soul. And then it will be at six, right? Six? Because that's five right now? Uh, no, he'll be like eight. Yeah, but there's an explosive trap. Does he attack into the explosive? I mean, you, you have to attack. You have to attack because you you have to win the game somehow, right? So yeah, I guess he you has... have to kill it. He, he doesn't even have enough damage to win in the next two turns. He has only 11 multiplied by two. Is that enough? Well, he loses the kill bot. I don't think that's enough. He will have 15. So if he if he top decks, why didn't you play the big game hunter? He couldn't play it. He, he, playing the VG is required to kill the mountain giant. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game is fun. Does Gregor um, just kill commands to deny the tap? I think you do. But do you kill command face or kill command? Oh, of Giant. course, kill command face. You kill command face, no question about it. Like, if the guy, if Elrond uh, tried to use the BGH, Gara would have saw, seen that. Actually, you don't need to kill command, because if you kill command and he has a heal, it's pretty bad for you, you miss damage. And if you just hero power and he doesn't have any heal, you win anyways with next turn with kill command hero power, even if he has low tab. So yep. that's definitely yep. the good play from Gara. And. Mm -hmm. uh, Elrond is put in a situation where he needs to tap or bust and he chooses to not tap, so that means a win for Gara. He only loses to, to quick shot to the second kill command and uh, that's probably all. And Gara had the kill command, so Gara takes the game here. So Phil's game is for the Hunter player and uh, that's what we talk about in the, in the start of the game. Like Hunter is basically favored from the start of the game because of the hero power, right? Yes. But um, at the same time, the anti kill boats and siphon souls can turn the game around, but this time it didn't happen. Like, one heal boat was not enough, and one siphon soul. With, with a second heal boat, though, I think, I think if he tapped for the second heal boat, that might have given the, given the chance to win the game. Because there was no way of Gara uh, top decking an, another 8 damage that would finish the game. During two turns with two um, with two taunted minions, right? Uh, yes, I, I was put in this kind of situation at Comic Con. I was playing Handlock, and my my opponent would kill me with the fireball. So I was like, if I tap and get Hillbot, is my only out. I tap and get Hillbot. Sometimes <laughs> RNG repays you. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes you have to do it, even if it seems like an unintuitive play. And <laughs> yep, that's it. So we're jumping into the second game. And this means Gara will play a different deck because Elrond kept the handlock, right? Yeah, keeping handlock is usually good. I really like handlock in this meta. It's like one of the best decks overall. It's also one of the hardest decks. Like many people underestimate how hard handlock is uh, as a deck. And people f think it's just easy to play giants. But one small mistake, one HP less or one tap that you didn't use because you're afraid to die can cost you the game. You need to know when to tap, you need to know how much to tap, and you need to know how many cards to have in hand to make the best possible plays. It's a really yep. hard deck. Yep. True. Ooh. Uh, we have a mirror match. This is one of the most skilled uh, um, matches that you can watch in Hudson, I think. Uh, not really. B BGH makes it not, not that uh, skillful. I think one of the most skilled is actually Hunter versus Hunter. Uh, you see the skill when you put aggro decks play against each other. Control decks rely on answers, so the player that draws the answers first usually wins. Like for example, they both need a giant on turn 4, and mm -hmm. if a guy has a giant and the other one doesn't have BGH, he, the guy with the giant usually wins. We see Gara having like a really bad hand, that's something you do not want to see in your starting hand. And we see Elrond having the giant and also having a BGH. So now, like, Elrond will most likely insta-win, because Gara drew really poorly. 
Um, do you know Lothar was the chance not of sure. not drawing either Twilight Drake or Mountain Giant by turn 4? I guess it's about 80, uh, you, like the chance to draw one of that is 80% each, I would yeah. guess. Uh, no, it's 80% total. It's like, uh, it's like 80 to 90% total chance to draw either one. And Gara didn't draw anything, so he's yeah. in that one out of 10 games where he, you draw poorly. True. Well, not big game hunter is kind of dead in this situation, so that's that's always comforting. But the emperor is something you don't want to see at all when you play a mirror match, because well, that that makes so much more viable answers in each turn. Oh, we see Karen. Wow. That that's so Gara-ish. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> If you wouldn't show me the player and you just tell me somebody plays Kierney Hanlock and you put me guess, I'll say Gara. <laughs> Hands down, Gara. <laughs> well, he cleared the board. There's one giant less and no Emperor left. But two zombie chows. Look at that. Well, I really disagree with a lot of uh, choices in Gara's deck. It looks really anti aggro. Jaraxxus double zombie chow. Kierney. That yeah. deck looks really weird, but it might work for him. Well, at the moment it doesn't work for him, but it might work in the future. Uh, I don't really know what to say. I think Elrond's deck is favored in this uh, situation. It's and, more uh, control oriented, right? Yeah. It's more, more end game, I'd say. It's really weird for me. Like, I was, I needed to disenchant something to get dust for another legendary yesterday on stream, and uh, I sold Karen and I told my chat that. Kieran will never be good again. Like, if Kieran is ever gonna be good again, I don't know what to say. Uh, Kieran is a card I don't see ever played again because Emperor, Sylvanas, even Party Sky Golem can be so much better than Kieran most of the time. Like, why would you want Kieran in your deck? True. And do you think he cut Sylvanas or do you think he plays Kieran, Sylvanas, and Emperor in the deck? Why would you play Kieran over Party Sky Golem? That's also the question. Well, maybe in Handlock you don't really need Pilot the Sky Golem, but in Mech decks, obviously Sky Golem all the time. In Druid Sky Golem because he's more sticky. I don't know. Well, and... I like the Pilot the Sky Golems more because the Shadow Flame is more damage with it. Well, I like it more because you can kill Belchers in one hit. Like now, see, he has to uh, trade some Fury. Oh, he just yeah. goes Jaraxxus. Wow. So he instantly says goodbye to Molten Giants. Yeah, he's like, I, I will beat you with our Moltens. Who needs maybe, Moltens? Maybe he doesn't play Moltens. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so Gara-ish. Wait, wait, that's this. so so much damage. Three, six, nine, nine damage. <laughs> hmm. So what about if you tap for an owl? Yeah. First, right? I think you always tap at the start of the turn. Oh. <laughs> Well, he had nine, 10 cards, right? Oh, did he? 3, 6, 7, 8, 9... Yeah, he had 10 cards, so he oh, had okay. played something first. Then he's excused. <laughs> Second Shadow Flame by Gara, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Hmm. That deck looks really... not common, but... Well, uh... now, with the Infernal each turn, it's kind of... Um, yeah, he's in a good spot to win this game. Um, Jaraxxus is obviously a really good card in a handlock mirror. If you play it and the, your opponent uh, doesn't have any way to clear it, you just lethal, win. It's right? Now it's lethal. Two is Hellfires it? and Mortal Coil for the Infernal. Yeah, uh, it's lethal. Yeah, that's lethal. Even with uh, Fars here? Should well, be. It's, you know, no, no. It's six, one off. One off, yeah. Hmm. You can still tap. tap. I, I think you put your opponent at 1 HP. BGH. Oh yeah, right. That's now. It, now it's in BGH range. Never mind. I think the place here. Do you want here... to play it? No, I guess not. Um, you probably want to play it. You didn't see any big threat from your opponent, and here you need like you need only one Hellfire. You just Hellfire play the BGH, but of course you tap first. Unless you have ten cards, let me count. No, it's nine. Yeah, it's nine. You just tap and then play Hellfire BGH. Maybe you tap into Lethal too. Oh, he doesn't want to play Hellfire? What? Shadow Flame. I think you should value... Uh, I'm not really sure what to say about this. I like Hellfire more, most of the time. Yeah, me too. <laughs> he acknowledges the mistake. He probably had to tap before. 
So now we play Belcher, Infernal, and Farsi, right? And you go face. Um, yeah. Also, one important thing is that uh, maybe he knows that Gara is triggered by these kind of details. Like, Gara hates when his opponent makes even small mistakes and then says sorry. I don't hit him. Why didn't he attack with the Jaraxxus to the face? Maybe he was afraid of Moltons. Like at 23? I don't really know. L let's just oh, call okay. it a good game. Yeah, yeah, good game, and it's 1-1. One, one. Hmm. So what... <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this game. Like, Gara was kind of lucky with the draw. Two zombie chows in the open... No, no, not in the opening hand, but like in the mid game is the worst. Like, you can get those in the first first two draws, right? To play well, them and maybe do something, but not, not in this situation. I don't think that if you get... If you would have had zombie chow in the first hand, it would be any better. Zombie chow just sucks in the mirror match. And him playing zo double zombie chow, him playing Cairn, he just says goodbye to the mirror match anyways, probably. He just targets the yeah. aggro decks, he wants to beat all the aggro decks with this uh, handlock. Like, I don't see this deck ever losing to aggro. And now he got the aggro matchup. He is against a face hunter from uh, Elrond, yeah. which plays Argent Squires. I wonder why. It's like... Uh, does he play Vorgans Infiltrator? No, no, no. Uh, you either play Argent Squires or you play Vorgans. It depends about. Uh, it depends on the meta. Sometimes Vorgans, like most of the time, Vorgans are better. But in a meta where your opponent doesn't play that many things, aka Handlock, Argent Squire is more sticky to the board. Like she will deal one, one, one more turns than the Vorgan, and she requires more trading power. So your other monsters are also protected. I, yeah. I really like Argent Squire in Hunter. I think Gara was one of the first ones that uh, played Argent Squire over Worgen, and uh, it kind of works at well, some the, points. The Argent Squire is also better in the mirror match, right? Uh, yes. She can do, do double trades, kill like a Lepernome and then an Abusive Sergeant, I don't know. She's insane. Here you obviously trade to protect the board. I guess that's fine, because otherwise you would have to play Mad Scientist into Abusive Sergeant and you don't want to lose damage with that. Yes. Gara is still in a really good spot. Hmm. Knife Juggler into Mad Scientist, sure. But he will not trade for the Farseer, and that will mean a Shadow Flame. I, I really like trading here. I, I like trading. If you have to trade at some point, this is the point where you have to. Yeah, the trade is good. Like, he saw double Shadow Flame from Gara, if I'm not wrong. And yeah. Uh, yeah. he must be afraid of that. He should respect that. He needs a top deck Owl. If he gets the Owl, he's in a really good spot. He just go Owl, abusive hero power, pushing a lot of damage. No, that's a Leper Gnome. Well, you can still play the abusive on the Knife Juggler to trade and then kill the little slime with the Mad Scientist. Um, You can't really... I would play it on a, I would play it on a Scientist and risk it. Like, he already played the Leper Gnome, so the total chance of this turn of hitting Sludge Belcher is 75%. If you if you buff your scientist and it hits face again, you just call unlock and concede the tournament. <laughs> you, you, you have to go for the risky plays. Buffing the juggler is not a good play. It's not a winning play. And he goes for it. And, and he, he hits, hits it. it. Oh. As I said, like you have to risk sometimes. If you don't risk, you know, no risk, no reward. Yep. Like if you play Lepernome and then you play abusive and then steal his face. It happens. You just lose. But you are not in a spot where you can decide wh whether you want to take the RNG or not. You are forced to take the RNG to gain a good board presence. Garo has such an interesting hand, I would say. It's like Belcher, Defender of Argus, Antique Killbot. He can he can even afford just to drop Emperor next turn. Uh, I'm not sure about Emperor. Maybe. Like if you if he draws Emperor next turn, then he has a he can. Play anti Hillbot and Belcher and defend of Argos for wait how much nine that's no he he can't keep it he can play it in one turn but then he kind of pushes the face hunter to trade for it or he just ignore it and then he gets more value and then he gets uh, anti Hillbot for less than four mana and that's insane and he the still can is, trade the thing is that you say that he cannot lose the game but 
I saw Face Hunters winning from this spot. You just need one Iron Beak for the second round, and you, then you need something like a bow to push a lot of damage in, and we, you will win on turn eight with the Leroy combo. I, I see the Hunter still winning. El well, Elrond Leroy still has can a change a lot, yeah. Like, Elrond probably runs two owls, so he, mm -hmm. that means he has mm -hmm. like a slightly 12, 13, 14, 15 percent chance to draw into one of the Iron Beaks. And if he draws the Iron Beak Owl and Gara plays a Salch Belcher, he will be in a really good spot. Shadowplay now. Okay, so no tap probably. That's a really slow play. And Elrond, he can just Yolo the Leroy. Oh, never mind. It actually depends. If he has Snake Trap, you just Yolo the Leroy. Leroy Hero Power is insane if you have Snake Trap. If you don't, you just play Animal Companion yeah. Hero Power, which is already. And there's good. a Huffer. Well, that's unfortunate for Gara. And as I said, it's not over yet. Yeah. So now, Dark Bomb. And Belcher, right? Yeah. It all now depends on the fact if Elrond will will get the uh, will get the owl, and he doesn't get it. I think you still go Leroy and Leash. Have to. Yes. You then have you to. trade two hounds for the slime, but you get rid of the Belcher, so you get a next turn if there's no taunts, you get damage from your bow. Yeah, that seems like a good play here. Actually, actually, you might just eagle home bow and attack. I like that. And hero power. First of all, you get the hero power in, which is really important at this point when an opponent is low HP. Second of all, if he decides to attack into the freezing trap, into the trap, he Explosive loses trap, his yeah, belcher. He loses his belcher first of all, and then he gives uh, his opponent one more extra bow charge. <laughs> well, he has the uh, defend of August, right? So next turn he can just buff the belcher to free HP and sustain the explosive trap. Well, he can play Lee right now. Uh, hmm. Do you want to play Animal Companion? I think play he should Animal have waited Companion. a bit. Look at that. Um, I don't really like this. I think he should have yeah. waited a bit. Yeah, me too. He should have considered Leroy. He could play Leroy and then unleash, trade two hounds and then trade the bow and then go face for eight damage, put your opponent at six. Oh, he sacrificed the, the Unleash the Hounds now. That's really odd. Mm. I, I didn't like that at all, to be honest. If you had to play Unleash, you probably would have to play it with Leroy. I didn't like playing Animal Companion. He he instantly played Animal Companion. He just had to take his time. That's why you have two minutes. And that's why players like Life Coach are really good in the scene at the moment. Because they take their time, in, even on turns that look obvious. If you mm -hmm. just look mm -hmm. a little bit more, he could play Leroy, he could play Unleash. He could trade two hounds and then either bow or the other two hounds and then push either eight or nine to the face, leaving uh, Gara at a really low HP total, where even something like Defender of Argus could mean little for you if you top like something like a quick shot or kill command. Yeah, definitely. He might and still win. Uh with well, some fury it's a little bit harder. It's still doable. We'll see what, what will be the next card. If that's an owl, no Clave Zuka. And the Glaivzuka is definitely not enough. Hmm. So do you play Lyra just to kill the Emperor? I doubt it. Well, you, you get 4 damage to the face this, this way. And you don't care about the Whelps because you have an Explosive Trap. So I guess you do it. What do you think about waiting one more turn? Mm, never mind. Uh, to get like... Arcane Golem to go Arcane Golem, Glaivzuka the Arcane Golem. Trade the 5 into... The Emperor and then go Leroy with the Glaive Zuka to kill him. Mm. Because he takes two damage from the explosive. He I has don't know. three cards. There are huge chances that he will get more more valuable minions that will toned up. Like he only saw one defensive uh, one Sun Fury. There are three cards that are, that are taunting up. And one more taunt means you can win the game. <clears throat> you this play Glaive Zuka for sure. Yeah. This way he at least dealt some damage. As guy, you start mortal, by mortal coiling. I think you. Uh, That's not useful at all. You, have you to might have to mortal coil one. again. Yeah. You have to because there's, you know there's an uh, explosive trap. Now you should calculate the damage, how much you can get by going uh, attack and then some fury and then Argus. So you deal 2 this turn. Next turn you're gonna deal 8. That's 10. And then 8 again, that's 8. Plus the Darbom 21, ah, that's definitely not enough. You need something else from the top deck. 
if you tap, you need to win next turn. Oh, hmm. hmm. Can you win? Well, that's not bad. That's not bad, but is that enough? Why do you decide to not attack? Oh, yeah, you can't attack because you're dead. You're at four, so if you attack, you're oh, you yeah, yeah, never mind, never mind. Tapping was pretty risky there. He, he needs to top deck in, into second heal bot? Yeah, or second well, heal he bot played is two enough. Farseers. He played two forces, so only Jaraxxus or, or Healbot here. You know what is funny? That even a deck that has double Farseer, double Zombie Chow, double Argus, double Sun Fury, double all, all the anti aggro, double Belters, double Healbots, still loses to an aggro deck because you drew badly. That's why I don't really like making your deck full control because Ago can still take you down. And now Gara just lost the game to Elrond. Wow. So Gara's out. This is a single elimination tournament. Gara is out, so he should definitely go to the drawing board and think about his handlock more. Think yeah. about why Cairn yeah. sucks. And uh, see what he can do in still the next. thinking about the Cairn. Like, the Cairn didn't really do anything. Well, like there's a reason happen. nobody played Kieran in the last months. Yep. So, Elrond is advancing to the next round, so congrats to Elrond, and yep. bad luck for Gara. Well, next time, we'll have the next qualifier in two weeks, I, uh, if I remember correctly, let me check. My 31. Yep. So that's in two weeks, then we have June 16 and July 11, so still three more chances for Gara to qualify uh, to the playoffs. And I wanted to remind you that top four of each qualifier will advance to the playoffs. And this is an open tournament, so if you want to, to participate, uh, you can sign up for the next editions at HS, HS, sorry, hs.drpepper.com/cup.de, um, and then you have um, then you have the, the tournament side. And I guess people will actually link it in the chat. Um, what else? We next match. What do we have at next match? It's Xorxy versus Pesty. So two two qualifier players, two open qualifier players, which I have nothing to say about because they're uh, like new faces for me. Unless I know Pesty. Know okay. I know Pesty. Pesty is a member of Team H2K. He's teammate of Inderen. Inderen oh, is the most okay. popular of that team. Mm -hmm. uh, Pesty was number one on ladder a couple times. I saw him and I played versus him on ladder a couple times. Uh, he's playing usually priest. He loves his priest because he thinks he can farm all the worst players than him. <laughs> he has a really good practice group there in H2K, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this game to see how well he can uh, play his priest. I am a priest player myself. Like I, I play all the classes. I play what's good usually, and priest <laughs> is something that really intrigues me. It has so many ways to play, but not that many are correct. You don't have that all. You don't have a lot of options. That's and, true. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about about that after the break. We'll have a five-minute break now, and see you guys after that. Yep. Yeah. 